Hi everyone, I'm Dana Friedberg with the SAG-AFTRA Foundation and welcome to our Conversations at Home series. Today we are sitting down with CW's Roswell, New Mexico's star, Janine Mason. Hi. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. We are so excited to have you today. How, how are you? How are things? I'm good. I am in Miami, Florida. This is where my family is. I was in New York City oh, when everything started to um, unravel. <laughs> I was actually on a bachelorette weekend in Philly. Oh. Um, and that was that sort of Friday, Saturday, Sunday where it was like, you know, I think Monday's canceled, you know? Oh. So I flew from Philly straight to Miami and I've been down here since, but obviously my whole heart is with New York and I'm so anxious to get back. But, um, for now, good quarantining with the fam and, good. You know, good. Exactly. And you got <laughs> one last bachelorette party in for a while too. I mean, all of us have just been like, how, how that worked out so well and it was kind of perfect because we it was like it was like see you who knows when you know? oh, have you been yeah. facing a lot with friends and co-workers and whatnot oh god yeah i just got house party which i'm i'm told is the, the thing yeah um and that's that's been so fun oh yeah absolutely awesome <laughs> well I'm doing good, you know, we're, it's, it's kind of, it gets, it's like the new normal in a way, where yeah, yeah. getting kind Quite of, resilient. exactly, yeah, absolutely. so last night, your episode of Whose Line Is It Anyways aired, congratulations on that, thank you, still can't believe I said yes, <laughs> are you, was that your first time kind of doing live on air improv, how, how was that experience? Well, you know, I, I came from a dance background and then theater background before I sort of came into TV and film. So I'm used to the live element. Improv, absolutely would not consider it one of my strongest suits, but I have done UCB. I've done a couple of the levels there and it had been a minute. And then one of my good girlfriends that I saw has a um, uh, all Latinx improv team through UCB called Spanish Aki Presents, and they are so badass. And last year they invited me to do one of their shows and be their guest. And I said to them, like, I'll do it. I'll do the story portion off the top, but like, help me out once it's improv time. Like, I'm the rest of you guys. I can't. And then on the day, some sick. So they were like, and I'm like, no, oh, damn it, I'll do it. But I'm so glad I did because I survived and it was fine and we figure it out as us yeah. actors and we, the show goes on. And my doing that, it was like maybe in the next week or two that I got this Whose Line Is It Anyway call. So the yes just came out of my mouth and it might have not had I not had that little primer. So I was very grateful because it was such a fun time and I've loved that show my whole life. So, um, and you know, it's just fun to be silly, man. It's It's fun to just like... It's so, it's hard what we do and it's so much work, especially when you're in like six months on a show and you're like, you know, you're, my nose at least is like in the script and in the books and I'm such a nerd. I love the reading and the work. So it was fun to just sort of go, let's just do something where we throw that all away and like see how that goes. And I'm very, I'm glad they let me play. It was fun. That's so awesome. Well, I want to talk yeah. about Roswell. You're in season two right now, and the show just got renewed for a third season. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Now, Thank you this so new property and new reboot of Roswell, New Mexico, has such an important socially conscious twist to it. I was wondering, can you talk a little bit about the importance of the new story and just kind of what it feels like to be part of a larger conversation? Totally. So our writer's room works with a wonderful organization called Define American, and their whole um, platform is to ensure that the stories that we are telling about um, migrant communities, immigrant communities on TV um, is accurate. And they had actually worked with the Grey's Anatomy writing writer's room when I did that show the year prior to this. So I was a little familiar with them and I was, I was doing a, um, a call with IndieWire recently and we were, they were profiling Define American and they spoke to me, they spoke to our showrunner, Karina Adley McKenzie. And, and what really struck me about it in talking to them, it was like getting to work with them on Grey's was amazing. 
but getting to work with them on Roswell meant the story that we are all taking care of and we're all making sure is accurate is at the center of the show. And that's what is rad about our show. Like the spine of our show is a woman who is dealing with this and who is attempting to keep her family unit together. Her parent is undocumented and you love him. Carlos Gombian, who plays Arturo or Teco on our show is just like delicious. Love that man, you know, uh, local hire actor who we are like obsessed with. And he is, he, his, his journey through the show, Liz is, attempting to take care of him. He's taking care of her and his community. It's all just stuff that I feel as a Latin woman myself is, is accurate to the, the people I know in my communities. I'm very proud of that aspect of the show. And it's something that Karina and the writer's room and Chris Hollier and Lance Anderson, all of our higher ups are so committed to honoring and hell yeah, it'll be a big part of season three yet again. Cause again, it's the spine of our show. I love it. Now yeah. Liz, is such and she's such a layered character and she has just all these aspects to her now that you're in season two is there anything that sort of you found surprises you about her have you discovered anything new playing her and is mm -hmm. there just anything that she could do that you think would just completely surprise you oh for sure i mean that that's been like the the biggest blessing with the show this is my first time time getting a second season on a gig. Um, I've, I've done uh, recurrings on shows. I did a show called Bunheads, which only got to do one season on ABC Family a million years ago. And then I was a series regular on a show on ABC that only did one season. I've done seven pilots. <laughs> so this was huge. <laughs> getting to do like, wow, we've arrived at season two. Um, and the the arc this season was uh, huge for me because as, uh, her responsibility was so high. Um, you know, she, season one, she's, she is this tough woman and she is this closed off person, but she sort of meanders into her small town, not expecting the the stakes that are then layered onto her and um the like the task at hand and and season two we just like pump that up even more so it's fun to to um to push that it's 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 what you do in ways figuring out like how far can we go with her capacity and Liz is, we say in the show all the time her superpower is her brain you know so um to push that to the to as far as she can possibly do she's literally doing impossible stuff right now impossible science bringing an alien back to life it's so fun to to try to you know in my body go like okay um and that's the work of the actor is you know it's like you look at sci-fi stuff and you're like well that's an impossible thing to connect to that circumstance of like your sister has been spoiler alert dead for 10 years and is resurrected but that's what we do we make that impossible thing feel like it can belong somewhere in our body in our instrument um so yeah the stakes went through the roof this year and it was very fun um and what i can say about the end of the season is season three will sort of come back to some sort of normal for her and um and I'm, I'm excited to navigate that downshift too from like excited, hyperactive life, you know, of navigating stuff. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that the show does so well is everyone is so grounded and has such a human, like a human aspect to them that mm -hmm. the, the extraterrestrial and the sci-fi sci part of it kind of just molds so well together that it just all makes sense within this world. And I think yeah. that everyone has just built up this really what feels like a grounded, normal world. Thank you. That's really what we would like to do. Our writers are so good at that. They'll like extrapolate a supernatural experience, but when you dilute it, it really goes back to like, you betrayed me, you know, something that's very human, which is so fun. Yeah. Season one gave us just this roller coaster of plot twists and turns. And I was wondering how in advance do you get scripts? And is there anything that has surprised you when you're reading them? Do you know in advance kind of what's going to happen? Yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of like a dance, you know, off the top of the season, I do, I love knowing. <laughs> <laughs> I love having information. I'm like, I'm like, where's my, where's my script? Where's my play? And let me like figure it out, you know? Um, so I'm the actor who 
always asks. <laughs> and I'm trying to navigate that in my position as number one, because this is new to me. I've never been number one on a show. And um, it's sort of going like, oh, let me ask for the things and let me communicate the things that I need to give my best performance and support this show. Um, so off the top, I do like to get as, as much of an idea where we think we're going to go. Granted, it's TV, and, and every, as things are explored and written, then it's like stuff changes. A guest star comes in and is killing it, and then we're suddenly like, wait, this made this work. Let's, let's write in that direction. So um, I remember at the, the, the beginning of season one, Karina told me early on that, that um, Max was going to die at the end of the season and that, is, and that Rosa was going to be resurrected. And that was like huge information for for me, I, I was like, holy, this is a sci-fi show. This is rad. Like, we're going to get to do this. And um, and just help me. I, I'm all about the details. I love that. So um, help me just sort of layer in stuff that I also think, like, this genre in particular is, like, so primed for, and the fans expect it. They expect those little bits here and there. So the communication is fun for me to, to, to geek out and, and satisfy them in that way of, like, how can I then give them some little little tidbits here and there to play with? awesome. Yeah. When you were starting research and prep for the show, did you sort of do a deep dive into extraterrestrial theories? And what did your research look like? Did you reference and how often are you referencing uh, the original Roswell? And can you talk about that process? Totally. So again, I love <laughs> research. <laughs> I saw yesterday I was doing a live and I was talking about this, about how I love research. And um, somebody tweeted me this morning and they said, um, last night I learned that uh, Jeanine Mason is Amy Santiago, which is a character on Brooklyn Nine-Nine played by a fabulous Melissa Fumero. And she's like, just like super type A, like researcher. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. I like, I have it all highlighted and color coded. I, I just love it. I love it. Um, it really it's like it's it's less like reinvestigation of ideas like just trying to find little little choices just trying to find something that i'm like oh, that could be fun to use then and most of the time i'm just filing it away and then every now and then i'll be like oh you know what i remember that one time i read this maybe that would be a fun element to play with in this scene you know um so I definitely watched the original because I just wanted to see if there were some even physical choices or stuff that we could use. And we have, we've used quite a few, you know, some like iconic gesturing like Jason Bear does his um, uh, answer of where he's from to Shiri in the, one of the first episodes of the show. And we did a mirror of that. And um, we did a mirror of like the Max and Liz's heads together um, on one of Shiri's episode on season one because she directed Shiri Appleby. Um, so definitely watch the show. And then I did a little bit of science research. It obviously goes very quickly over my head, <laughs> but I tried to do as much science research as I could, um, and talk to some friends. I also have, um, a couple of doctor friends who help me with like language a lot of the time and making sure I'm saying things correctly. Cause that drives me crazy when stuff is not, the details aren't covered. Um, and they explain things because it, it just helps to know what you're saying to memorize your lines, especially when they're super jargony. So, um, and then the alien stuff for sure. I've always been fascinated by it. So I, I, that was a joy to go like, let's just give me, you know, the, the space to watch ancient aliens and feel like I'm really working now, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Have you found, do people ever come up to you and share their crazy conspiracy theories about aliens? And do you ever find that people are talking to you about that? Oh, for sure. And my like ear is primed for it now. So recently I was at a restaurant and the booth next to me, they were talking about, um, oh gosh, I can't remember what conspiracy theory it is now, but it was something to do with some doctor who had been recruited to go to Area 51. And he, they were like, you're just going to be dissecting some materials. And he, he knew it wasn't human. <laughs> and they were talking about this man who had come forward recently with this. And um, yeah, I was just like, I, I can't talk right now, friend. I was just like tuning into the conversation behind me. <laughs> Did you chime in? Yeah. <laughs> I totally didn't, but then they started talking about Roswell too, and 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 1947 and the crash, and I just so wanted to be like, I'm a big fan. <laughs> like, Can you imagine if you had turned around? I know from experience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Listen, my boyfriend, the alien. <laughs> you wanted to like to date an alien? 
I think I know. <laughs> I love that they compared you also to Amy Santiago on Brooklyn Nine Nine. Like she's one of those like gals that I've just like deep on in love with in the last couple years through our fiercely Latina yeah. meetings that we do. We get together whenever we can, all of us um, women in Hollywood. And um, honestly, most of the time our meetings have some sort of of directive, you know, we'll talk about producing and pod deals and, and have someone come in and just sort of, um, give us some info and get us ignited about working in that way with from, from where we are in our careers. And then other times it'll just be like taco bar and margaritas and hanging out. And, and it's been a really fun way to just be around each other, um, which is happening more and more now, you know? Yeah. Um, but I remember when I was starting out, it really was like, I would, I, I did feel like if I think back on it, most of the sets I was on, I was the only you know, Latina, at least actress on, on the set. So now I feel like I'm getting so much more, um, so many more opportunities to play with other Latinx artists and, and artists of color, which just wasn't the case back in the day. So it's lovely and wonderful. That's incredible. And maybe we'll get a Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Roswell, New Mexico. I would die. You know, <laughs> like when the Jetsons make the Flintstones. Yes, yes. Last night, actually, uh, Tyler Blackburn, who plays Alex on our cast, he did a live taking our Roswell account, and and they asked him about Dream Crossover, and he said Succession, and I love that show. I die over that show, man. It's just so good. Oh. Honestly, the whole quarantine, it, it's, a, it's been problematic since the beginning, but it became personal for me when it postponed session production. I was like, no! <laughs> <laughs> I need it as soon as possible. <laughs> also, now I'm ready for the Reddit threads of Succession, Roswell, New Mexico fan theories. I, you know that's going to happen. I call dibs on dating cousin Greg. He is the most ridiculous character, and I'm obsessed with him. How do you think? I want Liz and cousin Greg. Liz, what about how would Liz and cousin Greg, what, that, they might be good for each other. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it would either be maddening in an absolute disaster because she would be like, focus, focus. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm in. <laughs> I love it. Let's, let's get those. I, we need some fan fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need some fan fiction stat. Please send it over. <laughs> awesome. So you talked early on about you, uh, you came from a dance background. How did your experience on So You Think You Can Dance in, like help your acting at all? And what kind of training ground did that lead to? Yeah, I mean, I definitely, um, you know, my interest in, in dance off the top was always because my idea of what an actor was, I knew I wanted to be an actor since I was seven. And um, my idea of what an actor was, was an MG, you know, triple threat, like could do it all, that the instrument is that full. And I just truly thought like, you have to do it all to do this. So I moved in, in training and singing and dancing and acting since I was little and um, the dancing took off for me and I just loved it. And it's something that I'm always looking for opportunities to still incorporate into my work. Um, but so you can dance, what was huge for me was I had absolutely no connections, not even than like a cousin of a cousin. I knew no one in the industry. My family, we are, you know, I'm first generation Cuban American. We're all in Miami, all a million of us. And we don't have people out in LA or New York. So um, it was my end to the industry. I, my manager, Sarah Shin Ayala at Three Arts, her and I started working with each other as a result of her seeing me on So You Think You Dance. And it was something she's even told me, like, she's like, I ne I've never done that. I never would have thought I'd ever watch someone on a reality show and hear them say, I want to be an actor. But she just was like, believed in me for whatever reason and, and, and believed that I could act <laughs> off of watching me dance on that show. And it is a storytelling platform, that show. So um, it set me up. And then where I had noise of like, will, will I be seen as the dancer now moving into acting and, and into rooms, into um, casting rooms? And what happened was the opposite. I had so many casting directors, a lot of which I'm still friends with and, and work with. And um, their feedback they were giving me was actually the way we saw you was as someone who was able to accomplish something like that and who was able to persevere and who had that work ethic and who was able to get that good at that. Then I want to see her and what she's applying towards acting, you know? Um, 
And that was huge for me. I went like, you're right. Like that, my dancing informs so much of who I am as an artist. And, um, and that it translated that I, I walked into that room, not having to prove anything, but then being like excited about seeing what else I had, you know? Um, and now it's like my, my acting coach and I, Victor Blorhauser, like he, we marvel at it. Like it's just the way my brain works. I really work physically first. So, um, I love that about my characters. I love being excited about making physical choices for them. And I love when people respond to my work by going like, I'm always excited about how, um, how free it feels and how it feels like it could, it could be explosive and move in any direction, be very smooth. Like, I love that about it. I like to, I like to work. Um, it's like half physical, half like movement, like um, half like music, you know? Um, so yeah. That's awesome. So what are the chances we get a Roswell musical episode? I so hope so. <laughs> I was joking around with someone because I'm like, how many seasons do we have to go before we reach that point? <laughs> like, do we get it in season three or does it have to be season five? <laughs> like, wherever it is, I will hold out. Like, let me get there. <laughs> well, you did a bit of dancing in the, in the pilot episode. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And, you know, we've, we've found like little ways to, to, to like sort of tie it in and it's always very cheeky, but yeah, of course you want it to be in the vein of the show. Um, but yeah, I, I actually have, I can't say anything about it yet because it's not released, but I did a movie musical and it'll be out later this year. And it was my first time getting to be back in the like, it is a, a cheeky little thread. It's like, we're dancing, you know? <laughs> so I'm so excited to share that once that comes out. But stuff like that, movies like Chicago, I remember watching Catherine Zeta-Jones and that and being like, let me at it. Like, that's what I want to do, you know? Um, so next, yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. Do you find you still dance for fun? And mm -hmm. you still work out that muscle? Oh, for sure. All the time. And it kicks my butt. And then I get together with my dance friends and they're like, where the hell have you been? Let's get back in the ballet. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> here we go. So they don't give me a break, which I appreciate. And I also just love it. I, I salsa dance with family all the time, but it's also how I hang out with my friends. So there's a salsa club out in LA that my friends are at all the time because I, I've dragged them there so much that now they're enthusiastic about it. <laughs> awesome. So you shoot on, on on location in New Mexico. What is the difference between shooting there as opposed to Los Angeles or New York? Do you feel sort of there's a different vibe when you shoot on location? Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, it, it, it's nice because it is six months. So we relocate, you know, and um, um, I know like those smaller stinks can be really hard for people. Like when, when I shot this movie I was telling you about last year in Atlanta, it was six weeks and you're living in a hotel and that could be difficult. But, um, I honestly, I love being on location. Um, I dig that summer camp vibe that everyone talks about where it's like, we're all there. We're all focused. I love that. Um, but with our show in particular, it's like such a character in our show. It's every frame and it's so epically beautiful. Um, New Mexico is booming right now with, with film and TV work. Um, I mean, it's always been strong, but right now it's just like, you know, Netflix is opening studios there. Um, I think Universal has a contract now where they're going to be working there more. Um, and it, it's, it, you just got to set up the cameras and like, let the, let the, the space talk, like let the mess of talk, you know, uh, and we were just in the background, like, hi, we're here. I know, isn't it beautiful, you know, um, but and, it, and being there, being, I talk about this like all the time because it means so much to me as an actor to be sitting in the makeup chair and have, you know, the, the artists who are working on my face or who are doing my costuming pieces and they're putting the turquoise and the silver on my wrists and my hands, and they are actually wearing them too, and they love it. Like, it's such a distinct, that like Southwest, it is, it's so distinct, and it, it's like everything, and the choices we make, the ways we layer it in, we're constantly asking our crew, like, wait, how, how would you prepare these, like, you know, huevos rancheros, and like, you know, um, so it, it, mean, it means everything to me on the show. I love that we get to shoot there, and I love Santa Fe, New Mexico. I mean, if you're thinking about, you know, working there, I would say 100% yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds 
sounds good yeah. to me. I was going to say, one thing that I do love about the show is that every detail is so carefully attended to. I'm always watching and having jewelry envy, and everything is just so meticulously yeah. planned, which I think is so great about the show. Our jewelry, our uh, costume designer, Andrea Fetterman, is incredible, and she will scour these little towns. There's a town called Madrid, which is south of Santa Fe, and uh, it's a little artist town. It is so cool, and they have some wicked jewelry there, and she will go on the weekends that woman does not stop, and she will just buy pieces everywhere. Most of the time, she buys such specific, you know, from a thrift store here or there pieces that there's only one, and then you're on set, and you're like, I can, I need to do this action scene, but I cannot break these earrings <laughs> because they're that good and we need to use them. <laughs> so uh, she's a genius and our, our costume babes are so good. So it, it's a joy. It's one of my favorite parts of the show, honestly, like armoring her up in her turquoise and boots and belt and, you know. Uh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> how exciting and how helpful was it having Sherry Appleby come on set for the first season? And how much did you learn from her? So much. She's she's a badass, man. She is so great. She is killing it. She's directing her face off right now, and rightfully so. And it was just lovely to have such a, I, I didn't, I, you never know, meeting someone. And she's just genuinely lovely and cares and wanted to impart on me, wanted to have a positive experience, wanted to help me navigate this and, um, uh, and it's just lovely when you meet someone like that. It's not, it's not every encounter, you, you know, um, and it, for, for it to be her was huge. Um, but yeah, I mean, we talked so much. I'm, I'm, I'm relocating to New York right now. I'm spending time in New York and I was talking to her about that. I'm like, you know, I want to spend more time in New York. I want to get back in the theater. I want to, I want to, I just want to be in the city. I, I want to be like in rehearsals again more. And, um, and I think New York is where I need to be. And she was like, yes, go, you have to go. Every time I go to New York, I feel like I something is revitalized in my career that might not have happened otherwise if I were in LA and you should go and do that. And I thought, God, I love her. I mean, she's just, she's a great advocate. Um, and she's damn good at her job. So it's been a pleasure. And yeah, the season, her episode is the one that aired last night. So it was great. And I can't wait to work with her again on season three. That's great. That's awesome. I know you did, you were just talking about theater. I know you did the revival of Zoot Suit here in Los yeah. Angeles. You did it in 2017? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Yeah. Do you see yourself um, doing Broadway? Is that something you want to do more of? You said you wanted to do more theater. Absolutely. I would, I would love to. That's a long time dream. I, I had such a good time working on Zoot Suit and um, working with CTG, Center Theater Group out in LA. It's like, I had always seen shows there. I mean, I've been in LA for 10 years hustling and I would I would show up for everything. I remember I saw Alfred Molina probably most recently in something there and uh, thinking like, okay, at some point, you know, like towards the back half of my career, I'll get my CTG moment. And it was just this like beautiful, you know, storm where it was like, we needed Latinx actors who were all young to do this very precious to CTG play, which is Zuzu, because it premiered there and it's the most successful show to date. Um, and Luis Valdez, the playwright, was involved and he directed us and it was just like all the most delicious things an actor could ever hear. And I had such a great time. Um, and then I got to work with Hero Theater out in LA last year. Um, um, Elisa Bocanegra is their artistic director and she invited me to do um, a reading series of Eduardo Machado's Floating Island Plays, and he's a Cuban playwright, and Eduardo was involved. So I've had these two just like wonderful experiences getting to work with the actual playwrights, um, and it's just like ignited me. I'm so excited to, to get to New York and um, just like find my people there and, and, and just, just get to play, you know? Um, so absolutely, yeah. I love a rehearsal. I love, I love like my hair tied up and being like, trying out and falling on my face and figuring it out so and that's just primed for that so yeah what does the rehearsal process look like when you're filming roswell new mexico thank you for asking me that honestly that's been one of the biggest gifts of this show and something that i talk to my actor friends about a lot where it's like 
the, the beautiful thing about getting to, to have the repetition of every day on set is like you're learning something new every day because every new every day is a new acting partner and you have some that you're getting you know i know from our series regulars like we know how to work with each other now and so i know some people love a rehearsal and some people love to talk about it and some people want to like play around and then other people are more like on the day people and um the the practice of that it has been huge it's like an it's acting class every day working you know um so working with our guest stars this year we have a lot of guest stars which is um not usual so it's, it's been fun to to practice that even more and um yeah i i i love I feel like it's my job as number one to be malleable when it comes to that and to to listen to what the guest starts and make them most comfortable because hopefully I'm comfortable <laughs> and they're probably nervous. Um, and so I try to sort of vibe them out and see whether they want to. I always offer, you want to run lines, you want to play around, you want to walk around in the space. Um, but, you know, it, for me, I, I love I love to play. I love I love to create ideas. So yeah, I'd say maybe it's my preference that somebody is down to be like, yeah, let's run it and let's 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 play around and oh you what wait, what if I picked up this thing and like, you know, I love that stuff. So yeah. That's great. Have you during this quarantine time been in touch with your co-stars? Any Zoom parties? With them. <laughs> yes, actually, we're actually trying to put one together right now, which I think would be really fun to see if we get some fans to jump in to do like a cast Zoom. But yeah, I, I mean, we're all, we're all um, very close and, it, and particularly in contact when the show is airing too, because we're all just like sending each other ridiculous pictures that everybody has. It's like, oh my God, I'm posting this tonight. Are you cool with that? And I'm like, oh my God, Vlam, it's not that one. Like I look crazy, but sure, post it, you know? So we're all, we're all very close and um, yeah, <laughs> it's been, it's been fun. It's been fun to just, it's been nice to get to have this as weird as it is of this, yeah. this time. It's been nice to have the show airing because it means even more to hear people just say like, it's really, it's, it's, it's lightening up my day and it's, it's making me smile, it's making my family smile and it's reminding me that it's Monday, <laughs> which is reminding me when it's Monday, when our show is so cool, um, means a little more. I saw some tweet that was like, you know that time between Christmas and New Year's, that's this forever. <laughs> That's where we're living. I know it's like that stranger thing upside down space. You know what I mean? It's like, I feel like we're in this in between. That's just like, it's so weird. <laughs> you know about aliens, so you're fine. You know? <laughs> Crazy. Uh, well, Janine, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and make things feel somewhat normal out there. And Thank you. Congratulations. I, oh, thank you. I, I love you guys. I love SAG and I love everything you're doing. And these resources, these tools that you guys put together have been vital to me during my career. And it's the coolest to get to do it, participate, and hopefully pass a little bit forward. So awesome. Have had you, do you watch any of our, have you seen our previous conversations with actors? Oh God, yeah, and I've gone to a bunch at the facility in LA. I oh, remember really? the, yeah, I went to one with um, is his name Ben Mendelson who was on? Uh, he's on uh, uh, oh my God, that new HB Outsider right now. Yeah, is that his name, Ben Mendelson? Yes, okay. He, I watched one with him. I think so, right? <laughs> anyway, great. Uh, I went and watched one at the facility and. Um, and I, it, he's such a great actor and um, watching him was fascinating and getting to like see him in person, talk about his work and um, watch the episode with him. And then like, it was just so cool. It was for the show he did uh, bloodline on, on Netflix. It was for that show that he had done and it was fascinating. So, That's awesome. Oh, hell yeah. I love, I love everything you guys. <laughs> well, I'll ask you one last question for those watching who one day will end up on TV shows, what's your biggest piece of advice? Oh man, I think what I really love is to encourage your curiosity. I think for me as an actor, in particular as a type A actor in that period where I was hustling, there was a lot of empty time in my mind, you know, time, waiting time, we'll say, not empty, waiting time. It wasn't waiting time, it was cultivating time. And um, 
your curiosities, the books you're inclined to read, I say, go and do it. I remember I spent a period where I was just like reading a bunch of books about witches <laughs> and, you know, just decided to start working on a standard British accent. And then less than a year later, I ended up on a show where I was doing a standard British accent, you know? So that time, like follow your curiosity and trust that it's leading you to prepare for something that's to come. And so then get excited about what it is you want to come. Maybe learn a little French and you'll end up on a series there or you'll end up on a series where your character has to speak French, you know? I really think they're, you're manifesting in that time the things you want to get involved in. So use it. And, and when you think you're dilly-dallying and like off course a bit with your curiosity, I, I think that stuff has a way of working towards what you're moving in the direction of. Yeah. Amazing advice. Well, thank you so much, Janine. This has been so much fun. And stay healthy, stay safe out there. Thank you. You too, babe. And thank you so much for having me.